A very good day to you and welcome to the program. Folks, it's a beautiful summer's afternoon and uh, we've got the cattle grazing behind and I trust that you are totally relaxed. You've got that mug of coffee, that cup of tea and you're going to listen to the Word of God. Now today, I really want to get right to the point. And the point is, and I know you know it too, we're living in the last days. Do not say there are four months and then the harvest. The Lord says, look, lift up your eyes and look, the fields are white unto harvest. When we look at the world news, we see what's happening all over the world. We know that the Lord Jesus Christ, His second coming is very, very near. And you don't have to be a prophet or a scientist to work that one out. That's there right before you. But we really need to make our calling sure. Folks, all roads do not lead to heaven, okay? And good people don't go to heaven. Believers go to heaven. John chapter 14 verse 6 is a very controversial verse. But Jesus said it with his own mouth. I am the way and the truth and the life and no one is going to the Father but by me. That is a fact. Now, when we preach that, we don't preach that because we hate people. We preach that because we love people. We don't want anybody to be lost. We want all men to be saved. But we have to acknowledge Jesus Christ with our mouths. We have to believe in our hearts, and then we shall be saved. Romans chapter 10, verse 9. If we confess with our mouths Jesus Christ, and we believe in our hearts that He's been raised from the dead, we shall be saved. Doesn't matter whether you're living on the farm, there's a tractor coming down the road, the cattle are grazing, whether you're in a city, whether you're on a ship, whether you're in hospital, whether you're in, in prison. The same scripture applies to every single one of us. I've called this program Fence Sitters. And the reason I've called it Fence Sitters is because we cannot sit on the fence any longer. It is very awkward. It is very uncomfortable, especially if it's a barbed wire fence, okay? We need to make a decision today. Am I going to follow Jesus or am I not going to follow Jesus? That's all. We make no excuses that this is a Christian program. We have all kinds of people watching this program. We have people from other faiths watching this program, and that makes me very happy because I want to tell you something now. Jesus died for all men, okay? And all you have to do is to acknowledge Him as your personal Lord and Savior, and the Bible says, and you shall be saved. John chapter 3 verse 16 is the most famous verse in the Bible. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. You know, folks, I heard of a, a gospel singer, and her name is Joey Feek, country western singer. She died. She went to be with Jesus a while ago. One of the top country western singers in the world. Loved Jesus with a passion. And they asked her about her situation before she died. She said, I am in a win-win situation. If I die, I'm going to get right into the arms of Jesus. And if I live and I'm, I'm healed, I'm going to be with him here on earth. Now, Paul said the same thing. In Philippians chapter 1, verse 21, Paul said, For me to live is Christ, and to die is but gain. You see, these people are not fence sitters. I'll tell you who a fence sitter is. A fence sitter is a man by the name of Judas Iscariot. He was a fence sitter. See? He was supposed to be a disciple of Jesus, but he was conniving with the opposition at the same time. He made a deal with the high priest, and the high priest said, I'll give you 30 pieces of silver if you can betray Jesus Christ. And that's exactly what he did. He betrayed the master, the creator of heaven and earth, for 30 pieces of silver. You see, he was, he was sitting on the fence. He was with Jesus, and then he was with the, the, the high priest, and then he was with Jesus. Folks, I'm telling you, it's the most uncomfortable place to be. Because you're not in and you're not out. I want to suggest to you today as you listen to us on this program that you become a black and white man. What does that mean? It means it's either black or it's white, but there's no gray area. See, 
Because the Lord says in Matthew chapter 12 and verse 30, He who is not for me is against me. And he who does not gather with me scatters abroad. I want to suggest to you today that you start to walk with Jesus. My dear friend, listen to me carefully. People don't have to like you, but they must respect you. Okay? They must respect you. The, 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 the soldier, the Roman soldier that was guarding Jesus Christ on the cross, he repented and he said, surely this man is the son of God. The thief on the cross who was dying because he was a thief said to Jesus before he died, Lord, remember me in heaven. The Lord says, today you'll be with me in paradise because he acknowledged Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We've got to stop mocking God. There might be some things that you don't understand about Christianity. And maybe there's a lot of fence sitters that are keeping you out of the kingdom. Because you say to me, Angus, they say they love God, but I know how they live during the week. Well, if you look at Titus chapter 1 verse 16, the Bible says very clearly, they say they love God, but by their actions they deny Him. See, you shall know a tree by its fruit. An apple tree doesn't produce oranges. We've got to get off the fence, and we've either got to get in the fight, or we've got to get out of the fight. But we can no longer sit on the fence, because it does not work that way. A fence sitter upsets the morale of God's army. Now, I've never been in the army, but I'm in God's army today. And I was speaking to two men that were officers in the army, and I asked them, what happens in a state of war when one of the soldiers turns his back and he deserts? In other words, he runs away, okay, when the, when the, in the heat of the action. What do they do? He said, we kill him. Now, those are strong words. We actually shoot him while he's running away. I thought, hey, that's quite drastic. But you see, folks, if they don't, then the next man sees what he's doing, and he starts to run away, and then all of a sudden, the army disintegrates, and they're defeated. In the olden days, in the British army, they used to fight in squares. Okay, so you had one line here, one line there, one line there, and then they had the, the cavalry on the inside. So the soldiers would shoot outwards. Now, if you are defending this side, you must know for sure that the man on the other side is not a fence sitter. He's not going to run away. Because if you're fighting the enemy here, you cannot fight the enemy behind you. And that was the importance of standing your ground. Now, in the church today, what's happening is we're fighting the enemy on the one side, and we've got people who call themselves Christians, that are opening the door for the devil, the enemy, to come in the other side. You say, how are they doing that, Angus? They're doing that by living a double standard. They say they love Christ, but by their actions, they deny Him. And you know, one of the worst things about being a fence-sitter, he's a liar. He does not tell the truth. He tells a partial truth. And then young Christians, like some of you watching this program, get confused. See? Because he says it's okay to do this, but the Bible says it's not okay to do that. And then he says it's okay to live like that, but the Bible says, no, I've given you a specific way to live, and you have to live according to the Bible. Yeah, but if I live according to the Bible, then my friends are no longer going to want to have anything to do with me. Well, that's the choice you have to make. People don't have to like you, but they must respect you. They must know that that man who's got in my back, he's not going to run away. See? And that's exactly what uh, Judas did. He ran away and he denied the Lord. But the tragedy is about a fence sitter, he's a loser. He's a loser all the way around. He's got no friends. He's got no friends in the camp and he's got no friends out of the camp because he's neither here nor there. We have to nail our colors to the mast today and we have to say like uh, Joshua, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And then you'll see things start turning around in your life. I'm talking to a man there who's a compromiser. Sir, you've got such a fear of man 
that you will not stand up for righteousness. And the Lord's got a word for you today. As long as you do that, you will remain in a state of depression because you've got no friends. You've got no friends in the church and you've got no friends out of the church because you're sitting on the fence. God says to you today, either get in or get out. If you look at Revelation chapter 3 and verse 16, the Lord says, if we start in verse 15, I know your works, that you are neither cold nor hot. I could wish that you were cold or hot. So then, because you are lukewarm and neither cold nor hot, I will spew you out of my mouth. That is a very, very serious verse in the Bible. What the Lord is saying there, my understanding as a simple farmer is this. If you are cold, you're an unbeliever. If you're hot, you're a child of God. The Lord says, I would rather you be cold than lukewarm. I would rather you be an unbeliever, this is what God's saying, than be a nominal Christian. A man that goes to church on Sunday and you don't even believe a word the minister says and you're only going to make your wife happy and your children. You are a fence sitter. And that's why your wife doesn't even respect you, sir. Because you haven't got the courage to stand up for your convictions. If you don't believe, why are you going to church? Rather go to the pub and at least be honest about it. Now, I know this is a very serious message, but we're living in drastic times. And God is calling up His troops. If you cannot stand up and say, as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord, you don't deserve to be called a Christian. A Christian is a follower of Christ. He is not a fair-weather Christian. What is a fair-weather Christian? Well, if the sun's shining and everything's happy, then I'm a believer. As soon as things get a bit rough and I have a tragedy in my family, I'll throw the towel in. In the boxing sport, the sport of boxing, the fighter has got somebody in his corner. It's called his second and his trainer and his manager. And the other corner, they've got the same. The two boxers come out and they start fighting. When their boxer is getting a tremendous hiding, a thrashing, and he can hardly stand up, they take a towel which they wipe the boxer down with, and they throw the towel into the ring. When the towel hits the bottom of the ring, the fight is over, and the opposition is the winner, even whether the fighter himself doesn't like it. That's what it is. Don't throw the towel in. Jesus Christ will not leave you. He will not forsake you. He's promised he'll be with you until the end of the age. We at the moment in South Africa are going through a horrific drought, the worst drought in 200 years. Some farmers have gone bankrupt. I heard the other day of a young farmer went out. His cattle were so thin that he couldn't even take them to the market to sell them. So he started to shoot his cows and then he, he, he shot himself. He committed suicide. We're talking about the worst drought in 200 years in this area. This green grass you see is what they call a green drought. Our dams are empty, but we are trusting God that he will bring the rain. We are believing God for a miracle. We are not sitting on the fence. We still have our 30-foot cross up on the hill. It comes on at night with the lights. We haven't pulled the cross down because there's a drought. We are standing on the word of God. Jesus said, He never ever promised you me a bed of roses. He said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 5. But folks, we're going through fire. But the good news is Jesus is going with us. Now, a fence sitter, he's on fire. It doesn't matter which way he goes. Because if he's with the, with the world, he's getting criticized by them because he won't get involved because he knows it's wrong. When he goes to church on Sunday, he won't get involved because he doesn't really want to commit himself. So he's perpetually pulled from one side to the other. That's why Jesus says very clearly, if you're not for me, you're against me. I want to encourage you today to get off that uh, barbed wire fence that's cutting you to pieces and making you so unpopular and so unhappy and get in to the fight. Don't run away because there's nowhere for you to run. I really believe that, folks. Uh, and that's why I'm excited about these last days. You know that maybe 10, 20 years ago, 
people would get away, some people would get away with sitting on the fence, but not any longer. We've come to the stage now where we've got to identify who we are following. Are you a follower of Jesus? The one thing that concerns me a lot is what's taking place in the church, not in the world. The world doesn't know any better. It's what's happening inside the church that is concerning me. And you know what that is? It's compromise. Compromise preaching of the word is a dangerous place to be. Preaching so that people will love you. Preaching that so that no one will be offended. So you don't want to speak about alcohol because you know one of the members of your church that puts most money in the, in the kitty is an alcoholic, so you don't speak about that. Then you don't want to speak about homosexuality because some people in your church are homosexuals, so you avoid that. So you don't speak about divorce because there's people, there's Christians in your church that are busy getting divorced. So you just preach a gospel that's called a fence-sitting gospel. Everybody's happy, but everybody walks out and it's like they've eaten a plate of popcorn. They're still hungry. They've got nothing to take home. People are wanting food, real food. They want the truth, they want it straight, and they want it in love. Preaching a compromised gospel is extremely dangerous when it, because you know what it does? It undermines the sovereignty of God. It takes away the power of God. That's why in those kind of services you'll find nobody gets healed. Nobody gets saved and nobody wants to come back because it's so bland. It's so tasteless. There's no salt. There's nothing to get excited about. I always say to people, if you want to punch me <laughs> when I'm preaching, right, or if you want to heckle me, I can handle that. One thing I can't handle is if you sit there and you start yawning when I'm preaching, or if you start looking at your watch, then that's very upsetting for me because it means there's nothing in the message. We need to talk about life and death. When a person says, what must I do to be born again? That's what Nicodemus said to Jesus. Jesus said that you must be born again. What, but what, how? How can a grown man go back into his mother's womb? He says, you don't know where the wind blows. You don't know where it comes from. You don't know where it's going, but you know it's blowing. So it is with the kingdom of God. Folks, Listen to me. Jesus Christ is more real to me than you sitting in that chair. I've seen him. I've experienced him. I've experienced him in bad times. I've experienced him in good times. But I know one thing. He's always been with me. But he does not stand with a fence sitter. In fact, he says to you today, sir, if you persist the way you're living, I will do nothing less than spew you out of my mouth. It's got nothing to do with how many times you go to church got to do with standing up for the Lord. Yeah, but Angus, I'm in a situation at work where all the other guys are non-Christians. doesn't matter. Yeah, but we're not allowed to speak about our faith. Well, you can live your faith, can't you? See, you can say your grace before you eat your food. Oh, well, I can't do that. Everybody will look at me. Good. See, and you can say when they want to show those blue movies and those pornographic movies, I'm sorry, I don't do that. I'm a believer. That speaks louder than a hundred sermons. You see, you've got to be different. You've got to be different. You, just, you actually don't have to be different. You just have to be a Christian. <laughs> that makes you different, completely different. And I'll tell you something else. That will show you who your real friends are. I know I've been there. You see, in the world, if you're a winner, you've got lots of friends. Make one mistake and you've got no friends. Ask any professional sportsman. Ask a rugby player whether the... the, 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 the the, the scoreline is exactly even. There's about a minute to go. There's a penalty to be kicked. That penalty will def define whether the team's going to win or lose. If that kicker puts the ball between the post, he is the hero of the day. If he misses it, they want to kill him. He's got to be expo uh, escorted off the field. Same thing with soccer. That goalkeeper misses that goal. They want to string him up. I remember many, many years ago, I think it was in one of the South American countries, they shot the man, they actually killed him because he missed a goal. That's the world system. Jesus says, I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you. I want to encourage you because I'm going to pray for you in just a couple of minutes. Get off the fence, get into the fight, 
start running the race and don't sell the Lord for 30 pieces of silver. Because the tragedy of that story is, and you know it as well as I do, that after Judas Iscariot realized what he had done, he betrayed the darling of the world for 30 pieces of silver. He took those 30 pieces of silver back to the high priest. He said, I don't want it. And the high priest said, we don't want it either. It's blood money. And he threw it on the ground. And that fence sitter went out and he hung himself from a tree. Judas Iscariot. He was one of the 12 that the Lord had called. I just feel that maybe one or two of you that I'm speaking to as I close. You said, Angus, there was a time when I was on fire for God. I had no fear of man. I couldn't care what people thought of me. I just wanted to be a follower of Jesus. But because of the pressure at work, because of the pressure at home, because of the pressure of my friends, I've become a fence sitter. I've been quiet. I just haven't spoken up when I know I've had to. And I'm so unhappy and I feel dirty and I feel ugly. I feel like a deserter. What can I do about it? Very simply, come back. That's what this program is about. Come back to Jesus today and say, Lord, I don't want to be a fence sitter anymore. I actually want to follow you. I want to be a follower of Jesus. I want to be so radical that I don't even have to open my mouth. People will see that I'm different. You want to be like that? Well, why don't you just pray this prayer with me? Let's just close our eyes where you're sitting right there. Father, please forgive me for being a fence sitter. I know what the truth is. I know the truth. I've given my life to you. I've been saved. I've been born again. I've been baptized. But Lord, I've become complacent. I've become lukewarm. And I'm very sorry about it. I'm ashamed of it. And I feel ugly and I feel dirty. But I want to come home. Please accept me as I am. Give me the courage tomorrow morning when I wake up to get out there and to tell people I'm no longer one of those lukewarm believers. I'm a follower of the living Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Till next time, may the Lord God bless you. May He keep you. May He, may he make His eyes to shine upon you and give you His peace. It's a wonderful, wonderful place to be. To know that your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. So as I say goodbye to you, folks, remember, when you stand up tomorrow and you make a decision for Christ, I can tell you that all the angels in heaven will be rejoicing because Jesus stood up for you when he was on that cross and he was not ashamed and he was not embarrassed, not for anyone. So may the Lord bless you until we see you next time. Goodbye.